Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. My name's Dr. Maddie, your doctor from the UK. In today's video we're going to be looking at the new anime movie Bubble on Netflix. And I was pretty excited about this movie coming out because it was put together by the teams involved in shows like Attack on Titan, Death Note, and it was produced by Wit Studio, who have massive titles in their roster. And it really lived up to its expectation. Not only was the animation gorgeous, but what blew me away was the soundtrack. Without giving too much away, it's a modern take on a classical story, much like how the Bella movie was earlier this year. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the movie's main character, Hibiki. I'll be talking about the medical science behind his backstory, and also be answering the question as to why he's always wearing those headphones. And if you want to support this channel, please give this video a like. Let's dive in. So what we're seeing in this first scene is Hibiki talking about his sensitivity to noise when living in the city. And there are many different types of sound or noise sensitivities, some of which are more common than others, but these might include things like hyperacusis, where people experience everyday sounds much more loudly than they should be. You've also got things like phonophobia, whereby people have a persistent, unwarranted and abnormal fear of certain sounds. And often these are normal environmental sounds which don't cause any physical harm that cannot under any circumstances be damaging. These include things like traffic, Traffic, kitchen sounds like doors opening and closing, and even speech. And then lastly you have things like misophonia, which is the intense dislike or even repulsion of sounds produced by other human beings. This might include things like chewing, lip smacking, or even breathing. <laughs> And in this next scene, from the way that Hibiki seems to be overwhelmed by everyday sounds around him, I would think he has hyperacusis. We see him exhibiting classical signs of being uncomfortable around sounds, with him moving his hands up to his ears to cover them. And it also appears as though these sounds might be causing him some physical pain, despite them being harmless. And if you were wondering, it's recognised that there is a level of loudness that would cause physical pain in anyone, and it's approximated that this is at the level of 120 decibels. Now, 120 decibels equates to the sound that's produced by a jet taking off, which clearly doesn't compare to any of the sounds generated in this scene. And so answering this question as to why he's wearing headphones. Now it seems obvious, it's clearly to block out and reduce his exposure to sound. But some of you might be wondering, how do you develop hyperacusis? Well, in the majority of cases, there is no clear cause. However, it's been speculated that it might be related to one of the following. So it could be due to the exposure to a loud noise, such as an explosion or a gunshot. It's also thought that it can be triggered by direct trauma to the ear or after having had surgery on the ear. And possibly more important, it's thought that it can be related to chronic exposure to noise, let's say in your workplace. Now hyperacusis can also be something that people with autistic spectrum disorder suffer from. It's not completely understood as to why people with autism suffer from hyperacusis, but it's thought to be due to the overstimulation from the various different sounds that can be found in your environment. Now what I really don't want you to take away from this is that if you're suffering from hyperacusis, I don't want you to think that you've got autism. And in this next scene, we see that Hibiki is going to go get his hearing tested to see if there's any underlying problems with his hearing apparatus. And normally these tests would be conducted by a trained audiologist, and it looks like the first test that he's having is something that we call pure tone audiometry. Now this tests Hibiki's ability to hear different sounds, pitches and frequencies by him pressing down on a button when sounds of various levels are played. And if you think about it, the human auditory system has an extraordinary range. We are able to hear tiny sounds such as rustling of leaves and yet able to tolerate extremely loud sounds such as music at a club. And in this second set of tests, it looks like Hibiki is having his hearing tested further in a sound booth. The purpose of the sound booth is to give some soundproofing to help eliminate any external stimuli that can sometimes affect your results. We call this type of test imitance audiometry, and it's used to assess the tympanic membrane or the eardrum and how it responds to pressure changes. 
This test generates a tympanogram, which can give a lot of useful information to determine if there are any issues in the inner ear. These might include things like fluid accumulation in the inner ear, or something called glue ear, which is very common in children. And finally, it looks like they're putting him in an MRI scanner whilst playing various different sounds to see if they can detect any underlying issues in the brain. And what they're looking for is any unusual brain activity when sounds of various levels are being played, which might help to explain why he's suffering from hyperacusis. Now, I've never actually seen one of these being performed, but I know in many adult patients of mine who have an MRI scan, they find the experience very claustrophobic. So I can't imagine how difficult it must be for a child to go through this. And it does look like Hibiki is finding this whole process very distressing, despite the fact that the sounds that he's being played are unlikely to be causing any physical harm. Rather, it's more likely that his point of maximal comfortable loudness is far lower than that of the normal person. And it's interesting because many people who experience hyperacusis often find it very difficult to describe what they're actually feeling. One patient once told me it's like how some sounds, for example, a radio in the background, can be quite pleasant one day, but on a bad day when you're feeling stressed or tired, it can be quite intrusive, distressing, and very irritable. Well, they describe it's like having a bad day every day. After hearing that, I understood how tormenting a condition it can be. And despite all these hearing tests that Hibiki's had, it looks like there's no underlying cause for his hyperacusis, which is often the case. But while some people might think that it's a problem isolated to your hearing, it can have a cascading effect on the rest of your life. Excluding the physical pain that could be caused by sound, patients with hyperacusis can also experience fear, anxiety, social isolation, depression, insomnia, and also a lack of concentration generally. And if you're affected by this at a young enough age, it can go on to shape the type of adult that you then go on to become. And we see signs of this throughout the movie with Hibiki being a more stoic character, not really getting involved in team activities, and also looking very lonely and isolated. Now in this final scene we see that Hibiki has almost been abandoned and left with his headphones to help dampen down the noises in his external environment. But is this the appropriate treatment? Well, no, while this is a good fix for certain circumstances, you don't want to be wearing ear protection all of the time, as this could actually recalibrate your brain's perception of loudness and even reduce your brain's tolerance even further. What you really want to have happen is you want to retrain your brain to be able to tolerate the sounds within your environment, not just get used to the attenuation that hearing protection provides. So if not headphones, what are the available treatments? Well, for some people suffering with hyperacusis, it may well just take a bit of time to get better by itself. But for other individuals, they may require treatment, and some of those are as follows. First is sound therapy. And what this does is it provides gentle auditory stimulation using hearing devices or noise generators. And what this helps to do is to reduce your sensitivity to sounds over the course of time. Secondly, we've got cognitive behavioral therapy, otherwise known as CBT. Now, CBT focuses on re structuring your negative reactions to hyperacusis, since hyperacusis is so closely tied to conditions like anxiety, depression, and even PTSD. And lastly, there are more experimental therapies, which might include things like biofeedback, other relation therapies, and even trying things like acupuncture. Ultimately, no matter what treatment you follow, it should be led by a team of trained professionals who are experts in the field of hyperacusis and know what they're doing. And you should understand that treatment ultimately will take time. So I guess in summary, hyperacusis can be a really debilitating condition to have to live with, but it doesn't have to be that way forever. So if you think that you're suffering from hyperacusis, the best thing to do is see your GP or see your audiologist to initially get some tests done and ultimately get some treatment to allow you to live a more fulfilling and happy, pain-free life. Okay guys, that's all we have time for today. Let me know your verdict of the movie and any other anime movies you'd like me to react to. Otherwise, if you like anime breakdowns like this, why not watch one of these two videos? I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. <laughs>